Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to take a look and see what a distribution of microstates looks like for a population where n equals 100. We now have 100 objects that can either be in state 1 or state 2. We still are dealing with a two-state system, and now equals 100, so that when the population is distributed between those items that belong in state 1, or that have the attributes of state 1, and those that have the attributes of state 2, when you add them together, you get 100. Again, we expect that distribution curve will become continue to narrow so that as you go out 10% away from its maximum value, omega sub max or w sub max, where we w sub max represents the maximum number of microstates when the number of objects in state 1 equal the number of objects in state 2. In this case, that would be 50-50. All right, so 100 factorial now is such a large number that you can no longer calculate that on your calculator, so now we're going to use Stirling's approximation, which we have over here, which means that if we try to find 100 factorial, that will be 10 to some exponent x, where x is equal to 0.4343 times 100 times the natural log of 100 minus 100 plus 1, and that comes out of Stirling's approximation, and that converted from natural log to log base 10. All right, we'll have to do the same for 50 factorial. Even though I think we can calculate 50 factorial on the calculator, we don't want to do both using the calculation on the calculator and Stirling's approximation. We want to do it both using Stirling's approximation so we have the minimum number of uh, uncertainty error there. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Let's use a calculator. So we take the natural log of 100 times 100 minus 99 and we multiply it times 0.4343, and we get 157. So 100 factorial equals 10 raised to 157, and out to one decimal place would be 157.0. All right, let's see what we get for 50 factorial. So 50 factorial will be equal to 10 to the x, where x is equal to that. So x is going to be equal to 0 0.4343 multiplied times 50 times the natural log of 50 minus 50 plus 1. Same as minus 49, of course. So 50, take the natural log of that, times 50, and subtract 49 from that. And let's see here, that gives us 146.6, and then we we'll multiply times 0.4343 equals, and that leaves us with 50 factorial is equal to 10 raised to the 63.67 power. 63.67 power, this was 0, 1 if you want to go to two decimal places, let's go ahead and do that, so it's a little bit more accurate that way. And now let's go ahead and calculate omega sub max, or w sub max. I keep calling it omega, but this is a w, so it's a total number of microstates at the highest probability level, so it would be 10 raised to the 157.01 power divided by 10 to the 63.67 power and 10 to the 63.67 power. Remember, when the bases are the same, we, multi we add exponents when we multiply and subtract exponents when we divide. So this will be 10 raised to the 157.01 minus 63.67 minus 63 a so minus 63.67 power. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 157.01 minus 2 times 63.67 power, and we get this is equal to 10 raised to the 29.67 power. All right, so that would be the number of microstates when we have 50 in each of the two possible states. That's an enormous number, of course, a huge number of microstates. So what will be the number of microstates when we're 10% off that maximum when n1 equals 45 or n1 equals 55? And it doesn't matter which one because it is symmetric. So what we have to do now is we have to find the amount of microstates when n1 is equal to, let's say, 45, which is going to be equal to 145 like this, which means 100 factorial divided by 45 factorial and 55 factorial, which is equal to, that would be 10 raised to the 157.01 power because the numerator is still going to be exactly the same, right? So we take 100 factorial will be 10 raised to 157.01, that would be minus, and we're going to now have to find the exponents belonging to the 
factorial when we have 45 factorial and 55 factorial. So there again we need to use Stirling's approximation. So 45 factorial is equal to, that would be 0, that would be 10 to the x power, let me just write it like that, so it would be 10 to the x power where x is equal to 0 0.4343 times 45 times the natural log of 45 minus 45 plus 1. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Start over here with the natural log of 45, multiply times 45, subtract from that 44, and multiply that times 0.4343, and that gives us the exponent of 55.829. So this would be 55.29 and 55 factorial is equal to 10 to the x where x will be equal to 0 0.4343 times 55 times the natural log of 55 minus 55 plus 1 and what will that equal to? All right, what's the exponent for that? So we take 55, take the natural... Oops, and again, so we take 55, take the natural log, times 55, minus 54, multiplied times 0.4343 equals, and the exponent there would be 72.27. All right, so here we have 157.01 minus 55.29 and minus 72.27 because basically we'll get the same situation as we have over here. We have 10 to the 157.01 divided by 10 to the 55.29 and divided by 10 to the 72.27 power. So 157.01 minus 55.29 and minus 72.27 equals, and we get 10 raised to the 29.45 power. All right. So what is the ratio now? What would be the number of microstates in relation to the maximum number of microstates when we're 10% off the maximum value? So now we have to find the ratio of those two. So we have 10 to the 29.45 power divided by 10 to the 29.67 power. So we have 10 raised to the 29.45. Or 29.45 minus 29.67 equals, there we go, and that gives us a ratio of 0 0.602, or in other words, this would be 60.2%. All right, now, interestingly enough, it turns out that the number here is larger than it was for n equals 50. That seems to bug the trend and we're not expecting that. What we're seeing here that there's enough error, enough uncertainty in the Stirling's approximation to throw us off just a little bit. And you can see that it doesn't take much of a number to get a big difference over here. So it turns out that because of the small errors in Stirling's approximation for numbers n equals 100, that it didn't quite come out what we expected, but still it's quite a bit less than what we had when we had n equals 10. So, to get rid of that uncertainty in Stirling's approximation, let's try one now where n equals 1,000. And that way we'll get a very good feel for how narrow that distribution will become when n becomes equal to 1,000. So let's do it again for a very big number now with n equals 1,000. 